People often tell me there's something cruel about libertarianism. Limited government? What's wrong with you, Stossel? Government should just keep the peace? What about the poor and the weak? Let them starve? Child labor laws, public schools, safety regulation, these are good things. And how about some financial regulation? They say certainly we need government to protect us from the panics and the crookedness like we just had. Well, here are four libertarians eager to address these questions. Jeffrey Myron teaches economics at Harvard. DeRoy Murdoch writes a syndicated newspaper column. Wendy McElroy is the founder of ifeminist.com. And David Bowes is vice president of the Cato Institute, the biggest libertarian think tank. So, Jeffrey, you first. Uh, <laughs> libertarians in the audience, it's uh, always good to hear. The safety net first. I mean, we have, we're a rich country. Isn't it the role of the country to take care of poor people? The libertarian view is that it's not. The libertarian view is that people it's should... cruel. Well, it might in some cases be a little cruel, but it's better than making everyone feel that they can get their support from somewhere else. It means you're not taking it from people who have worked hard to earn their income to give it pe to people who have not worked hard. But why is that better? if people suffer in a rich country and rich people have ludicrous amounts of money? Well, first of all, the number of people who will suffer is likely to be very, very small. Private charity, private efforts will provide support for the vast majority of people who would be poor in the absence of some kind of support. And when government does it, it creates an air of entitlement that leads to more and more demand for redistribution until everyone becomes a ward of the state. Wendy McElroy? Government aid doesn't enrich the poor. Government aid makes them dependent. And the biggest hindrance to the poor... At least poor, they have something. The biggest hindrance to the poor right now is the government. The government should get out of the way of people. It should allow people to open cottage industries without making them jump through hoops and licenses and taxing them to death. It should open up public lands and do a 21st century uh, equivalent of four, uh, 40 acres and a mule. It should basically get out of the way of people and let them achieve and rise through merit. Yeah. And what about the people who fall through the cracks? There will always be people who fall through the cracks. And, and I don't mean to be glib about this. I ran away from home when I was 16. I lived on the streets. I know how poor poor is. So I'm never glib about poverty. But you say compared to what? Compared to what system? Libertarianism provides the greatest prosperity for the greatest people. And prosperous nations are where charity occurs, where opportunity occurs. Yeah. Yeah. Roy? Well, I think if we're talking about public assistance, if, it, if it, we just focused on poor people, I think there'd be a lot more support for these sorts of things. Unfortunately, this country, we've decided that when we start a new program, program like the pres uh, prescription drug program, it's not just for poor people who are 80 years old, can't take her, care of themselves. It's for everybody over 65. Uh, including members of the Rockefeller family or, I imagine, Bill Gates Sr., and there's this sort of a fire hose effect. You just take a fire hose and spray money all over the place. And uh, there's no, no limitation to it. It seems as if the government's taking care of not just people who can't take care of themselves, but almost everybody in society. Uh, the health care bill now covers uh, people, families up to about uh, $60,000 in some instances. So we've gone well beyond any sort of a limited uh, uh, type of uh, assistance for people who can't care for themselves. Instead, it's just a giant universal entitlement system. And they say that's what makes them popular. People like that. Uh, it's just, it's way too expensive. I mean, with all these things, we're spending tons and tons of money that we don't have, and we're now in a, a printing press sort of culture, and I think we're going to have huge inflation as a result of trying to take care of everyone at the same time, when, rather than focusing a little bit on people who really have no other options. David? You keep asking, you know, what should we do about people who are poor in a rich country? So the first question is, why is this a rich country? Why are there rich countries in the world? Because 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 500 years ago, there really weren't rich countries in the world. There are rich countries now because an, an increasing part of the world is following basically libertarian rules, private property, free markets, individualism. You do make it by your own efforts, by your own achievement. And that's, ha that's what has taken us. The most important way that people get out of poverty is economic growth that free markets allows. The second most important way, maybe it's even the first, is family. There are lots of, of 
income transfers within families. Third would be self-help and mutual aid organizations. People join groups. This was very big before the rise of the welfare state. People yeah, let's would just join clarify groups. that. There were mutual aid societies before the welfare exactly. state. Exactly. That were driven out of business because people said, oh, well, the government's going to do now it. Now the government's you know? taking care of it. But there used to be groups of working men, of immigrants, of working women who joined these organizations that we now know only vaguely through old cartoons. They're the odd fellows and things like that. They were sexist and racist. They helped people of <laughs> their own kind. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, there, there, were, there were those for African Americans and those for Italian Americans and so on. But that was one of the ways. And then there's charity. And there is a lot of charity in America. And the last thing, the last place people turn to get out of poverty is to the government. And there, what we find is a system that traps people in dependency. It gets them into multi-generational dependency, causes them to live in neighborhoods where nobody works, where there's high crime, where there are not fathers in the home, dysfunctional, broken down families because of our welfare system. That's not a record of success. That You should be asking advocates of that system, why don't you care about the poor? Because they have delivered, maybe next week we'll, we'll do that. they have delivered broken homes, dependency, crime and lousy schools. One way you get out of poverty is you get an education. And some people say in this country everybody's entitled to a free education. Yes, but in the inner cities you don't get much of an education unless you're really driven yourself. All right, one more question and quick answers. When I make speeches around the country, the first thing people say is, how can you defend capitalism? Look how it just failed. And obviously government has to manage this better. Jeffrey? I think that government was enormously responsible for our recent ups and downs in the economy. It's partially housing policy that subsidized people to buy houses who couldn't afford them. It was partially Federal Reserve policy. It's a bunch of other things. We haven't, and we did, have not had real capitalism, okay? Not for a long time. We've had an enormous amount of government interference, so it's completely backwards to say, doesn't the recent evidence show that capitalism doesn't work? We weren't trying capitalism nearly as much as we should have been, and the specific failures we experienced were from government actions that created the crisis and the, and the meltdown. And David, the Federal Reserve was created to eliminate the... It was, crea <laughs> it was created to eliminate panics and depressions. And what happened 15 years after it was created was something called the Great Depression. And that's a great example. In 1920, there was a depression and the federal government basically did nothing. Have you ever heard of the Depression of 1920? Not really, because nothing much happened. Have you heard of the Depression of 1929? That's the one where the government decided we're going to use these modern tools of economic to cure this depression, and it became known as the Great Depression, and it went on, some people say, until World War II. Really, it went on until 1945, when the government finally stopped the, the depression, uh, the, 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 news, the uh, New Deal programs and the war, and let the economy produce. When we return, we will talk about Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran. We libertarians say we can't solve the world's problems, but does that mean we shouldn't have entered World War II? or Afghanistan when we return.